21. Calculate the standard cell potential for each reaction below and note whether the reaction is spontaneous under standard state conditions. Okie dokie. So we have our equation right here. We have magnesium solid plus nickel 2 plus aqueous yields magnesium 2 plus aqueous plus nickel solid. And we basically want to know what the standard cell potential is. Now, a cell potential is known as E cell. So E cell, this little notch here, means that we are under standard state conditions. So we're trying to solve for an E cell. And the formula to find an E cell is this. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's the E cell, the standard potential, is just what the voltage is of a cathode minus the voltage or the, the E cell of an anode. But now the question is, well, what is a cathode and what is an anode? Now remember that a cathode, you could always think of it as red cat, right? A cathode is where reduction happens. And at the anode, when we think of anox, anode is oxidation, especially in galvanic cells. Now, we can't find an E cell without standard values. So I went in the back of the textbook to find out the two half reactions that correlate with the reaction here. But now we just got to figure out which one is the cathode and which one is the anode. Now, all we just have to do is just look at the beginnings and the ends of the reaction and match them up with their half reaction. So for example, with nickel, right? Nickel is starting off with a two plus charge and ending with a solid, right? We're going from a two plus to something that has no charge in the upper right hand corner. Now, when I look on my half reaction sheet, I notice that it's literally the same setup here. I have the nickel, two plus, that's beginning, and I'm ending with A and I. But on the flip side, for the magnesium, I'm starting with the Mg, and I'm ending up with the Mg, two plus. Now, if I look at my standard cell potentials for my half reaction, I notice that this is flipped, right? In my standard state, Mg is a two plus charge, and then all of a sudden it goes to the solid. But that's what the difference is here. This is just swapped. Now, just know that these half reactions that they always give you is always going to be the cathode. It's always going to be the cathode because those electrons are on the left side. Whenever you gain electrons, that's what reduction is, that's always the cathode. So, since nickel 2 plus is literally the same, it started with the 2 plus and it went to nothing, and that's what we have here, 2 plus and nothing, this has to be the cathode. Now, we could also just take it as it is, right? We could see what the charges are. A nickel went from a plus two all the way to a zero charge, right? If you don't see a charge, that's a zero. And you're becoming more negative, and becoming more negative is always reduction. That's the cathode. So I know that the cathode is the nickel one. On the flip side, for the magnesium, you started off with no charge. So that's a zero, and you went to the two plus, zero to plus two. And remember, this is becoming more positive. So more positive is always oxidation, that's the anode, so this has to be the anode. So we know that the cathode value is the nickel, and the anode is the magnesium. Now with this formula, if we are using the minus, I love using the minus here, because if you use the minus, you do not have to mess around with these numbers. The minus does it for you, basically. So my total E cell is the cathode value, which we just found out was nickel. That's the negative 0 0.257. And I'm just gonna subtract that by the anode, which is a negative 2.372. And lo and behold, we're going to have 
our answer, our E cell is Kalki's out, negative 0.257, 257 minus a negative 2 point, whoop, what's going on here? Minus a 2.372, just making sure that I put in all the right numbers. That looks good to me. Press enter and bada bing, bada boom, we get 2.115. And the units here are the same units for your half cells, it's volts. All right, so that's the standard potential. Now from there, we should be able to determine whether it's gonna be spontaneous or not. And that comes from the sign. If you have a positive E cell or an E cell that's greater than zero, the reaction is spontaneous. But if you have a negative E cell, less than zero, the reaction is non-spontaneous. And since here, 2.115, I mean, it's a positive value, we know that this is going to be a spontaneous reaction. There's no additional uh, energy that is needed to make this oxidation reaction, oxidation reduction reaction happen. And that is it. Whoop, whoop. There you go. That's the end for this one. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I will be talking to you all in future lessons. Have a great day. Bye-bye.